In this video, we'll cover Excel's most useful financial formulas across three levels. First, we'll go over basic functions on the time value of money. Then we'll move on to intermediate functions on capital budgeting like the MPV and the IRR. And finally, at the advanced stage, we'll go over a loan schedule. Let's go. First up, we've got the present value and the future value. So let's take a look at some examples over here and you can download this Excel file down in the video description. Suppose you want to get your parents their dream car in three years time and you know that it costs 100,000. So over here we have as the inputs the future value, it's gonna be 100,000 and that's gonna be in three years time. And then we currently have a set amount of money, but we think that we can invest it and hopefully get an 8% return, maybe investing it in a fund like the S&P 500. So over here for the present value to calculate that, we're gonna go equals PV, here you're gonna see the description, just hit the tab key for now, and the rate is gonna be the 8%, which is what we think we can invest it, comma. The N per stands for the number of periods. In our case, this is gonna be the three years. Hit the comma key again. The PMT, we'll just ignore that for now, so hit the comma key. And from there, you're gonna get the FV, which is the future value. In our case, that's the 100,000 that we wanna get to in three years time. So we'll close those brackets there and hit enter. That should give us a present value of 79,000. So it means that today we need to have 79,000 and we need to invest it at 8% to hopefully reach that 100,000 in three years. Similar to that, we have the future value. Let's suppose that here we wanna be a bit more selfish and we know that with the 79,000, we could possibly retire quite well in 30 years time. So we wanna figure out how much money that would be for us in 30 years if instead of buying the car, we just invested it. So as you can see over here, we have the present value at that exact same amount, at 79,000, we just put it as a negative here. And we set for 30 years, which hopefully by then will be retired. And lastly, we think we'll invest it in that same fund at around 8%. So we'll go equals FV this time for future value. Hit the tab key there. The rate for us is at 8%, comma. N per number of periods, the 30, comma again and comma one more time, and then the PV is gonna be the 79,000 there. Close those brackets and hit enter. And you can see we're closer to a million right now at around 800,000, hopefully by the time we were to retire. Now, one thing that we've assumed here, which probably isn't entirely accurate or realistic, is that we're not gonna be investing any money during those 30 years. But it's more reasonable to think that as you have a salary, possibly you're gonna be investing a portion of that every year into that fund. So over here, you can see the FV, future value with recurring payments. So we're assuming here that aside from all of the same numbers here, we're also gonna have an annual payment, a contribution of around 2000. So basically every year you're gonna be paying a further 2000 into the fund. And so that future value there is going to differ. So we'll go equals FV, hit the tab key again. The rate is that same 8%, comma, Number of periods is gonna be those 30 years. And here's a big difference. Now we have a payment. For us, that's gonna be the annual payment of 2000. We'll hit the comma there. And finally, we'll get the same present value. Close those brackets and hit enter. And now you can see that we do have a lot higher of a number and that's because every year we're gonna be contributing 2000. Now moving up a level to intermediate, and here, let's assume that we're working at Nike and we're considering opening up a new store. So let's go to control page down to see the scenario over here. And you can see that we've got all of these cash flows. Basically, we want, we want to assess whether it's worth investing in this project or we should actually just not open up a new store entirely. So you can see over here, we're going to have negative cash flows in the first period. That's primarily because we're going to be renovate, renovating the space, etc. And from there, hopefully we're gonna have, have all of these cash flows uh, scale up as more and more people hear about our store and hopefully like it. Here to decide whether this is going to be a viable project for Nike, we can go ahead and sum all of these cash flows by hitting the alt equals and just hit enter there. But unfortunately, this isn't entirely right. And that's because of this concept called the time value of money, which basically says that a sum of money today is worth more than a sum of money in the future. That's primarily because you can go ahead and invest it and hopefully grow it over time. And so right now, this isn't entirely accurate. Instead, we would need to discount all of these cash flows back to year zero so they can be accurately compared. 
And for that, we're going to assume a discount rate of 6%, which can be seen as the cost of capital or the cost of financing for the company. So over here under NPV is where we'll first do the initial formula, which is equals NPV. Here you're gonna see the description, press the tab key there. The rate is gonna be that 6%, hit the comma key, and the values for us, we're actually gonna select them from year one, press the shift right arrow all the way to year five, and then close those brackets and just go plus, and we're gonna add the year zero cash flow over there. And you're probably wondering why we went ahead and added the year zero one at the very end. That's because were we to um, put it all inside of this formula, so inside of this red area, what would happen is that it would think of year zero as year one, and so it would distort everything, which wouldn't be entirely accurate. So over here, you can see that we have a positive NPV. Now, based on this, it means that the project is going to be profitable. And so we should go ahead and proceed. Now, if we look closely at all of the periods here, there is a bit of a flaw. And that's because all of these dates are actually not on a yearly basis, but actually on a semi-annual basis, so every six months. So instead, we need to be able to specify the dates. But the NPV formula doesn't quite allow for that. So instead, we'll use the X NPV. So we'll go equals x npv hit the tab key there now you can see that we have the rates the values and the dates so we'll go first for the rates comma the values are all of the cash flows over here and this time we can select the year zero as well hit the comma key and the dates are gonna be all of these date periods over here which we can nice now specify close those brackets and hit enter the, now you can see what that's gonna look like as you can see it's a lot higher that's because it's a lot more compressed in the time period. But usually when you assess projects like this, you don't just want the dollar amount, but you also want the percentage return. So let's go ahead and take a look at that through the internal rate of return here. So we'll go equals IRR, hit the tab key there, and the values for us are just gonna be all of the cash flows over here. And the formula is really just that simple. Close those brackets and hit enter. You can see we get a 6.7%. Now the general rule here is that the I, if the IRR is greater than the discount rate, then we go ahead and proceed with the project, and if not, we don't. Now that said, same issue that we had with the MPV, and that's that we're not accounting for the dates as being not years, but in this case, in, in uh, every six months. So instead, we need to use the XIRR. So we'll go equals XIRR, hit the tab key there, and again, we'll be able to select not just the values, comma but we'll also be able to select the dates which is what we want and close those brackets and then hit enter there now you can see that it's also going to be a lot higher just like it was with the x npv based on the numbers that we calculated here we feel comfortable telling our team to go ahead and proceed with this project and thank you to nordpass for sponsoring this video nordpass is a secure way to remember passwords instead of sharing sensitive data to other employees via messenger or email, which is both a liability and a waste of time in that you need to wait for them to reply. Using NordPass confidential information can be saved securely in one place and accessed and updated by others when needed. And in case you have new hires or departures in your company, you can easily give them access or remove access from them with NordPass in mere moments. On top of that, they also offer tools such as a custom password generator so you don't waste time and a password health checker to make sure your company's confidential information is safe. So if you're interested, see NordPass Business in action now using a three month free trial with code Kenji explains, which you can find the link for down in the description below. All right, back to Excel. Now moving on to the advanced level, and here, let's suppose we need to get a loan to open up that Nike store we mentioned earlier. And so here's the terms that the bank is giving us on their inputs. You can see that it's for a loan of 500,000, which we need to open up the store. And they're giving us a 7% annual interest rate for a total of five years. And so we need to convert this into a monthly as that's what we'll actually be paying. So we'll go equals, the monthly interest rate is simply the annual one divided by 12, hit enter there and the number of payments is the five years multiplied by the 12 months and hit enter there as well now let's find out the actual payment amounts 
So over here down below as the outputs, the monthly payment for us, we can actually use a formula called equals PMT, which is the payment for a loan. Press the tab key there. And so the rate is the monthly interest rate, comma, number of periods is 60, comma again, the present value. So right now that's the um, loan amount for 500,000. And we'll just hit enter there. And so you can see that we have a monthly payment of around 9,000. And that being said, that monthly payment consists of both principal and interest. The interest you can see as a fee that the bank is charging us for letting, letting us borrow that money. And on the other hand, the principal is the actual amount that we borrowed. So the 500,000, which we'll eventually need to pay back. And so for the principal, we're just gonna go equals PPMT, hit the tab key. And so the rate is gonna be the monthly interest rate, comma, the period, this is basically, hey, when do we wanna see this? In our case, let's say we wanna see it in the first month. So I'm just gonna put a one there, comma. The number of periods is at 60 again, comma. And finally, we have the loan amount at the 500,000. We'll cl close those brackets and just hit enter there. Now, the other part should be the interest. And so for this, it's just gonna be equals to IPMT, which is the interest payment on the loan. Hit the tab key there. And it's the same concept here. So the rate is a monthly interest rate, comma, period is gonna be dot 60. Sorry, in this case, the period is the one, comma, number of periods is at 60, comma, and finally, the PV is gonna be the 500,000. Close those brackets and hit enter there. And so basically, the sum of these two should equal to the total monthly payment. So let's test that out. We'll go equals this one plus this one. And so now I'm gonna go equals this equals this one up here and it says true and so that looks to be correct for us one thing that's a bit tedious here is that every time we need to switch months we actually need to go in and type the different month so instead it's probably a lot easier if we just make a whole table showing us all of the payment amounts on each specific month so first i'm just gonna delete this area over here and so we have a total of 60 payments now to make a drop down like that, I'm just gonna go equals, sequence, hit the tab key there. And so we want a total of 60 rows, close those brackets and hit enter there. And so you can see, got it, okay. Press control down arrow. That's gonna take you to that 60 there exactly. Control up arrow to go back up. And so for the payment, that's gonna be equals to the monthly payment over here. But I'm just gonna put it as a, neg an, as a negative so that it stays positive. So it's a bit easier for us to see. And we're gonna lock this just by hitting the F4 key and hit enter there. Basically the locking thing means that when I drag this down, so just double click there, what it's gonna do is it's gonna stay um, locked. So inside this formula, inside the cell, sorry, and it's not gonna be moving down. So right there is fine for us. For the interest, it's gonna be equals to the loan amount multiplied by the monthly interest, at least in month one. And then the principal is simply gonna be the difference. So equals payment minus interest and hit enter there, that's the principal. And so the remaining balance is how much of the loan we've actually paid off. In our case, so we had the total loan amount at 500,000. And it says here that in principle we paid around 7k so minus this one here and hit enter now moving on to month two over here and so this one is gonna be based off of the remaining balance and not based off of the loan amount like we did earlier because that's actually going down so we'll go equals the monthly interest rate over here press the f4 key again this is gonna lock it with the dollar sign and multiply that by the remaining balance hit enter there and from here, principal is gonna be the same um, function as above, which is simply a su subtraction of one minus the other. So we'll just double click there and drag it all the way down. Same thing goes for the interest. We can just double click it and drag it down for now. Now the remaining balance is the part that we need to adjust. So it's gonna be equals to the remaining balance of the previous month minus whatever we've paid back this month over here. Hit enter there. And now we can drag this down as well, just by double clicking. And the best way to find out if we did this correctly is that by the time it's uh, month 60, so year end of year five, we should have paid for everything. So go to control down arrow, and you can see that we have a remaining balance of zero, as that should be the case, meaning that everything here in the calculation seems to be correct. 
For more on Excel, check out this video over here for doing a discounted cash flow valuation on a real company. Hit that like and that subscribe button if you liked it, and I'll catch you in the next one.